so are you going to be around you think is it next week it's Tuesday. Oh, cool. Tuesday. Yeah, I'm going to Dallas on Tuesday, but I'm not sure what time, so I might not be there. Okay. Three times that day. I'm going to be there. 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 Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, well, Aspen, Hecker, here. E, here. Hussey, Hins, K, Lapari, here. Mackenzie, Claude, here. Quintal, here. Roberts, Surinam, here. Okay. Yeah, so. um, recognition of visitors. Um, just so that we get to know everybody that's sitting in the room. Um, if you could just acknowledge, like, tell us who you are. Yeah, I'm Randy Wright of the Perry Norman Law Firm. And Mark Herbert, finance director. Miguel Etabe from Fuller Silver Park. Holiday well, Simmons, financial consultant. Okay. Um, the finance report. Mark, you're up first. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Usually, you guys read minutes and all that kind of stuff. We missed you. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to go through this uh, in the order that it's in your agenda, um, even though they may not. Make logical sense next to each other, but we'll just go with it. Um, on page 13 of your agenda is the balance sheet for July 31st. And as I look at the top of the report and see that this was wrong on August 8th, I can tell you right now uh, these numbers for the fund balance and some of the items on the, the balance sheet are going to be changed from this because we are in the midst of our audit, which is always a very fun time of year. Um, and so we are constantly making journal entries to close out the previous year. Uh, I can tell you that the first delinquent um, uh, supplement, uh, I don't use on there, 6,436, that has been paid. That was paid back in June. And so uh, you'll see next, Small that that item is not a going to be on the report. Um, so far uh, through August, through our normal tax collection process, which is where the delinquent SADs are going to be found, forty nine thousand dollars of that uh, seventy six thousand dollar balance was collected through the tax collection process through August. So a substantial amount of it's been collected. Um, and so we're good there. Uh, going down uh, the page where it says 2223, end of year fund balance. Uh, it says 1.288 million. It's going to be more like $1,350,000 is what we ran in the, um, this last um, fiscal year ends. So with all the adjustments that we made for the uh, going to page 15, if I'd like to look at things kind of in a uh, uh, year to date format. So this is the cash flow analysis through uh, the last fiscal year, uh, June 23. And it shows that we are $556,000 uh, better than what we thought we were going to be for the year, uh, which is a pretty decent amount of money. And there's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, first of all, uh, $100,000. If you look on the variance uh, of the column, the first item to switch assessments, $105,000. That's from the rate increase. And you got to understand a lot of times these numbers were created 
prior to a lot of things happening. So, you know, like this number that was set for the projection was based on something before you, you increased the rates. So, uh, going down to special event revenue, uh, $68,000 more. I think when we did the budget for this fiscal year, you know, we were still kind of coming out of the midst of COVID, right? So I think when we did this, we were trying to be conservative in how much we thought we were going to get for special assessments. And special events. Special events, events sorry. And um, things kind of came back a little quicker than what we thought. And uh, so I think that was a, a big positive sign there. Um, in office disbursements, you see that there's a sixty-eight or $48,000 variance in personnel costs. Obviously, that's uh, due to the, uh, the gap that we had in the uh, director position. And so uh, that contributed a little bit. And then on the bottom half, we've got a bunch of really uh, high uh, variances, um, particularly um, like valet services, which we really didn't use for construction of South Road Woodward. We have um, maintenance in the um, DSD. Again, we were anticipating using some of those funds during construction, didn't use as much as what we thought. Um, same thing with marketing and advertising. We're anticipating doing some, some work there with the construction. And then um, tenant recruitment, I said we, we don't have a consultant correct right now. So um, that led to uh, a very positive variance as well. So overall, that contributed to the $550,000 um, cash balance variance. Um, going to, I'm going to skip over 16 because basically that's just the accumulation by quarter of what transpired and we already went over the variance. So going to pages 13, 14, and 15, and these are your July revenue and expenditure statements. Um, I say when you get into July, there's not a whole lot of activity there because normally a lot of things that we are receiving in July and paying in July relate to the prior fiscal year. So um, you're going to be a little light in July and catch up throughout the year. Uh, right now, you're showing a 5% youth of your balance through July. And if you were to take all of your expenditures and evenly distribute them out, that's about 8% per year or per month. So right now, you're a little bit under um, the budget figure. And revenue, um, other, there's not a whole lot of revenue coming in in July other than uh, some special events, stuff for like farmers. So in August, September, whenever we get the Chevrolet, mm -hmm. um, that will be uh, a big item for special events. So I will be happy to put that in the question for the board. I'd just like to say the special event revenue um, and how that was on a fire this year. Um, great job. And working with all the sponsors and everything like that. But then also like thank you for all of our sponsors. We had some great um sponsors this year and <clears throat> work with the community and everything like that. So one thing I was back about that expenses is working on mm -hmm. increase typically good or is it kind of a lot of the expense and no, I don't. I don't know how um, that is planned out in terms of. I know you guys usually have a budget of how much you. Yes, exactly. Pay. So there, um, there are extra dollars that come into it, but you know that helps to balance out the rest of the events that we do put on as well. So um, it's an. I think it's an important event in terms of revenue for us overall. Um, but, uh, you know, it, there is a cost, there's a cost to, um, city services, to our, our time and, um, in really putting on that event it is fairly 
labor intensive when you get down to it. So the revenue wise, it's still a good. It's still a good thing, right? There's a lot of there is a lot of uh, expenses setting up for the event and taking down the event and cleaning the city. Uh, I know some people remarked uh, how well the city looked after the event that things were cleaned up very mm -hmm. very quickly. And so you know that part of what they yep. paid for is is, is all that. So, yes, exactly. And uh, and and the city did a great job with with all of that. I think that you know comparing cities to cities, because I've been in a couple uh, for Dream Cruise, and, um, you know, really a, a great job, I think, well run. It went very smoothly, too, uh, in terms of uh, our, our setup and getting the cars in this year, um, because we had kind of a newer format that I'm working with. In the evening, I'll bring up old Woodward, that, that, that just like... Oh yeah. Like, oh, people were waiting. <laughs> they knew it was coming, and they're just like, "Can we get in there now?" We had to run out a few people. Um, there was a little bit of craziness at the at the very end, but um, it but we great. but it was safe. Yeah. yeah, it looked great with the new roadway and the escape and everything. It worked really well. I thought really good photo photo shots. <laughs> you know, <laughs> with the backdrop. Yeah. yeah. And speak to your question about special items. Remember, we didn't have restaurant week. And so some of this is timing also as we reevaluated and kind of decided what we're doing for different events um, because we decided this year. I think this year you were going to see the hearing. Um, Mark, I just had a quick question and I might have lost it. Okay, so and I know I don't have the report in front of us, but last month, for the period ending June 30th, we were looking at the revenue and expenditure report. And it was like a negative 19,300 bucks in investment income. So it was like a. That was uh, the prior fiscal year. You did, you, did, yeah. you did answer that, I think. It was the, or it was the budget, but then the balance was like, it ended up being like uh, $22,000 or something like that. But it was like investment income that it had. Like uh, uh, so you should have had a negative balance last um, fiscal year in 2022. <laughs> what is yeah. that? So that is basically to the market adjustment in investments. Yeah. It's not a realized loss. Yeah. It is just some market. Yes. Yeah. We just had that a bit of to to book um, the market adjustment, and we um, so in the course of our, our portfolio. Uh, we have uh, investments that go out three to four years in, in treasuries. And many of the things that we bought were during COVID time period where we were getting half a percent interest and stuff. So um, as in, uh, interest rates go up, the, the uh, value of that investment goes down in order to compensate for the difference. Yes. And yeah. the track, they're all T bonds. Yeah, they're all T bonds or US agencies, which by state law is really one of the few things that you can invest in. Gotcha. We can't invest in stocks or anything with general investment dollars. It has to be either uh, CDs or, or US Treasury bills, some very safe. Yeah. Type of uh, investments. Are you locked into the helpless? Are you locked into those? Or... Well, it's it's better to. It, there is a point where it makes sense to sell at a loss and then reinvest the money into something with a higher return. Uh, we decided to just hold to maturity. Uh, we are now putting in newer uh, investments as we come roll around with those. We are actually throwing some dollars to help you get a little bit further to lock in some of the, the interest rates. So, um, yeah, once, around, like, four or five percent yeah, yeah. So, once these mature and get off the books, that market uh, adjustment's going to flip the other way, and you're going to get these huge gains that, that will come up in a couple of years. That was what I was thinking, Nancy, but I wanted to mark to say it first before I. Yeah, it makes sense. It does. It's a weird thing with, with how bonds work. You know, the interest rates go up, the price of the, the bond goes down, and, and it just goes right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Ye
for you. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Mark. I, and I just wanted to also note that there were, you know, a number of questions um, uh, that we received from Mr. Simmons um, over the course of the last month. I did include those questions and the answers in the packet and the overview. Um, there was also a question from the executive committee as to what the current cap rate is um, for you know those properties um, uh, that are over um, a certain size, and the current cap rate is at seventeen thousand sixty-two, and it's estimated to be at eighteen thousand four seventy-eight in the sense. To be <laughs> to the set there, um, so an eight and a half percent increase um, over the course of this year. So you know, each year we can, you know, I think it would just be good to kind of keep track of what is that uh, cap rate and how is it fluctuating um, and growing each year. And the, the reason for the, the large increase is when we look at the rate of inflation uh, because of the way it's set up. Is we're looking back almost whole, not just prior year, almost a whole year behind. So I see uh, inflation was quite high last year, and so now we're starting to see that hit the inside of cap rates. Any other questions? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is the consent agenda, the approval of the board minutes and approval of the voucher. I'm going to double check if anyone has questions. No? Um, motion. Yep. Yeah. Right, motion to approve the board minutes and voucher. We could do, yeah, do this yeah. roll call because it got the best. Yes. 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 I know, I think I'm going to wait. So, yeah. Okay. So, we already met Randy over here. It's on my thing, it says Randolph, but I know you're right. You actually um, said Randy when you walked in. So, um, but Barry Mormon um, has been actually more than 25 years, 25 years in Birmingham, coming here in 1997, but started the firm back in 1926. So they focus on long-term um, relationships with their clients, focus on respect um, and uh, trust with them, and really, you know, making sure that they're part of the community and integrated into the community. So, um, I'm really excited to so congratulate you, Melissa. It's been a few here for 25 years. Wow, great. The water comes in. It's a part of your life. It's a great. Isn't that pretty? We love our water. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, like I the firm is going to be 100 years in 2026. It's a, it was a Detroit firm. I actually opened my office in Birmingham in 1976 over on Adam, 770 South Adam, uh, across from the iconic uh, Maccas Cafeteria, which I frequented a lot, and then ended up moving uh, to Brown Street in, in 1983. So the 25 years of my firm merged with Barry Norman in 1997. That makes the 25 years. And you also know some of my partners, uh, Don Carney, who was a city commissioner and mayor twice. I remember the, the financing related to the Ryder Cup <laughs> that uh, our firm participated in. And then uh, John Schroeder is currently on the uh, ethics committee from the city. So we had deep roots in Birmingham and uh, I really appreciate being you know part of the community and, and being acknowledged. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we oh, uh, I will. <laughs> you are welcome to stay, but no, by no means you don't. Have to, you know. <laughs> we'll do invisible hours. <laughs> um, uh, we also had Bruce on the agenda, but um, because Susie isn't here, I'm just going to wait and we'll see if she can attend next month. So we will hold off on that one. Okay. Uh, new business, business development budget. Some page 23. Oh, things are put in the page of the page. That is a lot. <laughs> very hard. <laughs> it does. Yeah. This very small page be anyone that doesn't have class. Right. <laughs> I know. Well, I finished for my makeup. <laughs> All right, uh, so just a quick introduction. I know Mike's not here today um, to introduce this, but um, the Business Development Committee has been looking at kind of what they're going to expend over the course of the next year, um, knowing that they have, you know, a, a good sized budget to work with, um, but our, our efforts are going to be rooted in uh, recruitment and retention. Uh, we have great occupancy. We don't want to lose it. Um, so you'll see in the budget. Um, I should know if I hurt, but I don't. <laughs> yet. Um, but we are looking at doing um, workshops. So one of the things that we're still planning to um, bring uh, back to the board probably next month, because I think we'll have everything um short up by then in terms of quotes um, from various consultants. Um, but looking at providing two large workshops um, that would be in person and then also four uh, that would be you know via Zoom um, remote throughout the year. And um, you know, provide it in a format that is short and sweet and gives them a lot more information um, even after the fact. So uh, we do already have some resources on our website right now that you didn't have before. Um, so if you get a moment, kind of check that out. There's some great tools there for you um, as a business and um, you know, for anyone else that you might speak to, um, whether it's a tenant. Um, or a neighbor that might be looking for resources. And, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, just ask me and get with that individual as well, because um, I can help guide them through some of those tools that are there. There's online tools that they can look at videos um, and templates for like worksheets, all sorts of things. So um, there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, also, uh, uh, We'll be contracting with AlphaMap for our market data tool. I know that we have had the privilege of using Placer AI um, through Oakland County. Um, that is like a, a variable right now because it's not in that same department anymore. It's in a different department, so we have to kind of you know ask for help to be able to utilize Placer AI um, for us. And the business development committee really wanted to have the resources at their fingertips. This is. Um, I would say um, a, a much cheaper version of Placer AI. However, it gives us the basic data that we really need. And um, the intent was to enter into a contract that we're paying on quarterly so we can evaluate it and whether or not um, it is still really the best tool for us at that cheaper rate. Um, and within the contract, uh, we have a 30-day out. So it's a it's a good company. Um, they were very present at ICSC when I went there um, in what was that name? Um, and uh, really working at getting more and more um, people on board with it. But it's the same premise of that digital um, your mobile um, tracking. So they're tracking that same type of data. Did we pay for Placer AI when we used it? No, because that was through the county. And it's like $20,000 for Placer AI and for uh, Buxton uh, in the 30s. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that 
um, they they pull almost all of the same data um, collection points. The only thing that Alpha Map doesn't pull is actually place for AI's data. So place for AI has its own um, niche. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, but they're pulling from other sources. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, they've been very accommodating, which I like. Um, you know, easy to work with, and they're going to provide, provide us training. We have unlimited number of users that we can have on the system. So I think it's a good one to start with and see if it's really what we need. Um, and then if not, we can reevaluate that as we go. Um, moving along, um, uh, property data collection, uh, just uh, really committing some time and energy with um, uh, a consultant to come in and help us kind of round out that property data collection. Um, time amongst staff, it's always one of those things that are, it's, it's, it's hard to get to, right? It becomes kind of lower on that totem pole in terms of like who who and what you need to get done. And um, I think if we just commit um, an individual for a very short period of time for like a month to knock out some of those outstanding property um, data points that we need, I think will help us get it done. Um, and then also um, planning for some broker roundtables and just some dollars to put towards that for marketing materials and um, or, you know, event space um, and or, you know, appetizers, beverages that we might need for that. Um, and then the incentive program. Now, the committee hasn't defined at this point what that incentive is going to be, but we want to make sure there are at least some dollars in it this year, um, knowing that we would probably be releasing, if we were to do something, it's probably going to be more at the beginning of 2024 when we do that, um, by the time we make some decisions on that. Uh, and then also, um, we've already budgeted for business anniversaries, um, some uh, recruitment, travel, and research um, dollars, and then moving on to marketing, the video features, which is the next item for approval, um, budgeting for that, um, our new CRM and messaging system, um, still evaluating which company will be utilizing for that. The one that I thought we were going to have a uh, a good <laughs> contract with you know, way more expensive than I, than I <laughs> imagined. So going back to the drawing board on those a little bit. Um, so it's taken me a little bit longer to work through it. Um, and then uh, just some, you know, uh, promotional materials for recruitment purposes. So in total, you know, you're, you're just shy of that overall budget of 100000 um, obviously, as things kind of um, either change um, or shift, depending on what the you know quotes come back as, um, we'll make adjustments um, as needed. But I um, figured this would be a good opportunity for the board to know and understand the, the game plan for the year and to approve that game plan. And the reason that this is coming after the fiscal year started is because they they have been working on revamping some of again. It was a, it's been a year or been six, nine months of everybody kind of each area, um, each committee kind of reevaluating what they're working on and making sure that you know they've got things in the direction they want to, especially coming out of COVID. Um, you know, the difference in the market now. And I want to thank you for doing this because it makes it a lot easier for people to follow it, makes sense, understand wh where it's going, how it's divided up. Yeah. With the way the city runs the budget number, because that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you have one line item that seems like a really large line item, people always ask, what are you using that? Right. right. So you need to have the answers. <laughs> so, did you want to say anything? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? The business development budget for fiscal year 2024. I'll fight that. No, I have, you have to make a motion. <laughs> I can't make a motion. motion. Oh, I thought you just did make a motion. No. Do I have? Oh, you have a motion. <laughs> 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 All right, roll call. Becker? Yes. Eve? Yes. Hasi? Yes. Lapari? Yes. Bullard? Yes. Quintel? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Serna? Yes. Okay, next is the very next page, um, page 24, 
the visit features without kind of an overview of videos. Yeah. All right. So both committees have been uh, reviewing this and, and working through this. We, we've probably talked about this a number of times over the last few months, um, but we're happy to say that we're finally uh, to a point where we can approve a, a service provider for this. Um, we are looking at creating um, uh, four feature videos on business segments and then uh, a general overview video as well as then our seasonal videos as, as part of it. We've generally always had a, an overview and some seasonal videos for the holidays and for like the summer, um, springtime. So um, this will be revamping all of those. Uh, we are looking at going with a, a different service provider on this. We did receive uh, multiple quotes on this. And um, after reviewing it, that you know the, the business development committee has sixteen thousand that is budgeted, and the um, marketing committee approved ten thousand five hundred um, from their budget um, towards this as well. Um, the one thing I do want to note is that the um, contract total cost at this point does not include any talent or models that might be needed. Um, so I do recommend that we do at least as part of this contract, approve an amount up to, um, and at the most I see this is probably 2,500. I think it's going to be less than 2,500 for either models or talent that might be needed, um, or it might not be needed at all. Um, so I would recommend that we do, um, approve the contract, um, for, I'm sorry, I just forgot to do that again. Would that come out of marketing or would it come out of it, marketing? Yeah, and I would say that it can come out of marketing. You do have um, one line item for like special projects um, of $5,000. So I think that it could come out of that um, sub line item within their budget. So um wanted to make sure that that um, was discussed here because we did not have that discussion since I was not able to be at those meetings last week. Um, the goal for that, that budget is, is, is that enough? So we amend it at 25 or just I think it's enough? Amend it. We could always amend it. We could you can come back and amend it if we need it. Before a video, it doesn't seem like you know, you know yeah, I, I don't know. That yeah, and I think it's really more about timing of you know putting um, some of these together where some of them are going to be able to be built out all at the same time. Our holiday video though will have a different time frame um, because obviously you want to shoot it when there's so <laughs> exactly so uh, yeah so um, so it would be sixteen thousand from business development. And then 13000 from marketing and advertising. And I would just direct it that the marketing and advertising committee um, uh, confirm uh, where within their budget that's pulled from. And we had actually talked about a little bit more in marketing. Mm -hmm. So there was conversation about that already. Okay, good. Um, um, I had a question. Uh, the three minute videos, are they strictly on the website or what, where do they get utilized the versus TV ads or what? Probably 30, 30, 30, right, exactly. I would say that they're, you know, they're more your, your website. Um, it's great for, um, for Google, for your Google page. Um, and we're trying to really push that out more and making sure people are, are going to that. Um, as well as it becomes, you know, kind of part of a lot of other things you can do throughout the year, whether it's presentations I provide um, to um, really, you know, marketing it um, at uh, other events um, and programming that we do. And the brokers, I mean, Angela. Absolutely. Right. Right. Angela Sunder and I more of the chart one. So, so the youth with business development so that as we're looking at different companies and everything like that, we can actually show these videos and show the positive yeah. things that are happening to the business this year. Mm -hmm. um, and then they do use them through social media. Not necessarily, you're not going to use the three minute that's mm -hmm. going to be um, on our website because on our website, that would be too large of a platform, you know, too much space. Um, so we can do a seven second on, our web, on the front page of our website, but we can do a link to it 
and um, show it through our website. So we would be able to still do that. So yes, we'd be able to um, use it. Just to also talk about, this was a collaboration across most of the, most of the committees. It was an idea that came out of special events, and then went to marketing, but then business development also got involved in. So it's been a collaboration of three of the committees. So um, I think all the committees are standing behind that they really feel like this is going to be um, a positive. So, um, and if you notice, if you look at the presentation of Bureau, um, it's a little bit different of a look and feel than what we've had in some of our videos. We've also thought that it was time to change the look and feel a little bit of our videos so that it grabs new audiences or reattracts the same audience that we have by giving a different look to it. Um, and Beth, you've worked with this company, correct? I have, yeah, mm -hmm. for, for a long time. Yeah, they do. He does. They do great work. Their presentation to us is hands down for us. Yeah. You know, stuff. It's just, yeah. you know, boilerplate, the same old stuff, it seemed like. Yeah. Yeah. He recently did a bunch of projects for Royal Oak that, that turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of perfect for it. They are. <laughs> So do I have, does anyone have any further questions? A motion to approve. Okay. So um, it would be a motion to approve Bureau. a 20 per Bureau for the... So if you go to page four, so so you, yeah, actually you can fill in the blanks. Yeah, it's 13 and 16, right? Correct. Correct. The number. Correct, yeah, 16 per right. yeah. We have a motion for the Bureau as a service provider to produce the business feature and downtown overview videos in an amount not to exceed 13,000, 16,000, 16,000 uh, for fiscal year end 24 from the tenant recruitment amount and 13,000 from the marketing and advertising. Group. Okay. We'll call. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. E. Yes. Patsy. Yes. Lapari. Bola? Yes. Quintal? Yes. Roberts? Yeah. Serna? Yeah. Thank you. I was thinking here on the motion. So I was like, oh, great. I can make it up. I have to. <laughs> All right. Um, next, old business, um, the B4 zoning amendments. So this is for the health and fitness for the second floor. Mm -hmm. Um, so really just a quick update on that. Uh, the planning commission um, did meet in August um, and they set public hearings for um, actually September 6th and 13th um, for the final language um, and recommendation, but they did agree with um, our recommendation that uh, not allowed on the main floor, but upper floors or sublevels. Have much more than that. <laughs> yeah, that's just in the down because they're in the big four. Just in the big four. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is already allowed in the three. 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 Which is only the five by five, five though. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> if anyone has done any uh, things since they started talking about that, did it pass? Well, no. I don't know if it went last night or not. I'm not sure. It sounded like they were doing two meetings. No, they usually do two. I don't know if it was because they hadn't finalized the language. I think last night would have been probably reviewing the language and then putting it for. Okay, you know. I will see if I can get an update on that. That was, that was the latest. I'm just wondering if anyone's like, clearly, like, yeah. coming in. I feel like it's going to happen. So I'm just wondering. It if appears anything, like it's like, going to happen. Yeah. Yes. And this is something that comes around about every five to seven years. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. hasn't been successful in the past. I think it will be successful with this commission. Yeah. Would be my guess. Right. Okay. Any tenants coming into town? Um, not that I've spoken to, but I know that Brooks, um, I believe, or um, they have been approached by some, and I think it's just, I think it, that was for a few months ago, so I don't know if those have already, you know, yeah. passed on, but yeah. I think there's been interest in it, though, definitely. Oh, mm -hmm. Over time, there's been a lot of interest. Constantly, I don't know if you have ever turned it, but 
like my song company. I know I've had to turn people down because of it. Yeah. So yeah, that was, was a good a good part of it. Yeah, we had a lot of requests for small yeah. places. Yeah. But we shy away from you know, you know, I usually play the music and stuff and the fact that other times. I think for the lower space too, it could be great. If a lot of the lower yeah. spaces you don't get it to utilize those. And you're not going to have that movement above you or anything like that. So it's a great spot. And we, we do have a lot of times people with the lower levels, the garden levels, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to figure out what to put there. Mm -hmm. you know, they're not good retailers. Right. Okay, um, next is the executive director report. So we may come back around to that if Jana gets me into the executive director report. Um, yeah, so just briefly, so have we have been working on the tourism advisory committee appointments and, and yeah. trying to identify individuals for, for yeah. that to be able to bring to the board and hopefully next month because it, I was really yeah. intending this month, but unfortunately, um, things didn't work out for that. Um, but um, you can see um, on page five, there is a list of tentative um, or potential representatives that we would like to see on there. Um, we also might want to divvy it up in terms of um, uh, committee level, uh, where some might be um, in terms of the advisory committee only periodically really coming to those meetings where we might need them for input in um, um, uh, discussion, but not necessarily a part of the decision making committee. Um, <clears throat> the uh, committee itself, uh, you know, I am looking at this being monthly for the first four to six months to get everything kind of laid out and then turn that to like a quarterly meeting. Um, so we get together, we, you know, readdress you know, things that we might need moving forward in the next year, year and a half, whatever that might be. So um, so hopefully I'll have that all together by uh, next month's meeting. And um, we did receive some good media um, this past month, obviously WXYZ was out there doing things for Dream Cruise. So we had um, extra push from them regarding that as part of our contract with them. Um, but we also um, uh, received um, immediate inquiry from CDS, and that was through Cindy Sierra, um, which I, you know, truly appreciate her reaching out and asking me to be a part of it. So, um, and I think that that relationship is, I think, in a good place. So that's nice, um, and uh, it showcased, um, you know. Birmingham in a great light. So, um, and got nas national air. So that link is there. So if you want to get um, to that Dropbox and download it, um, if you want to be able to share it um, with anyone that you might be, you know, either looking to recruit yourself um, or um, entice um, to be here. We put that on the board our links on our website yet? Um, I will have to have some media links on, we, website, on the website. I will have to double check with Erica if it's up there yet. Um, um, she did post it on social media though. Um, sure. Um, and then uh, we had the unveiling um, of art at the Daxton. That was a, a very rainy event, <laughs> but it, was, it turned out very well. They had probably over 40 people that turned out actually for a rainy day, but they had, you know, of course, lovely food and <laughs> stuff afterwards too. So that's always a good enticement, but the art looked great. If you haven't been there, um, you know, check out the Via. Um, there's also a little ice cream window if you did not know that. So <laughs> go enjoy some ice cream for the end of the season, right? Um, we have uh, movie dates coming up uh, Friday. And then the art walk on October 12th, we are um, still recruiting businesses to be a part of that. So uh, make sure that if you want to be a part of that, let us know. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think the cruise event went very well. Jamie does a great job um, with coordinating the chaos <laughs> that it is. Um, there were some areas of improvement that um, we all identified and said, yep, that's what we need to improve next year. But I think um, with those small little adjustments for entering cars and exiting cars, I, I think we'll be in a, in a really, really good spot. So um, 
we did receive a grant um, from Main Street Open County um, for the thousand dollars to put towards our CRM um, change. And then uh, we're still waiting to hear back on the MEDC uh, RAC grant. That actually is going to be sometime this month, I would say maybe later this month. So once I hear, I'll let you know. It's good news. Um, and then um, I just want to say thank you uh, for everybody for your support. Um, sorry. It's been a very hard week. But it was lovely to see the flowers and the messages that I received. So thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to committee so that Christina can really be talking to the right now. Can I can give you an update? Yeah. There was not a public hearing last night. It's next Wednesday. Okay. Before. So we'll see what happens. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, committee reports special events with the Richard. Richard's not here. So sorry, you want to take over? I <laughs> <laughs> to put you on the spot about it. Day in the town. Um, I think everything was positive. Um, a lot of people feels more like before COVID events. Uh, there was a lot of people, even though it, it rained a couple times, um, and it sounded like the retailers were happy with uh, the turnout. Um, on that, um, we're moving forward with a Thursday evening plans. Um, I think we kind of decided to try out leaving the retailers open longer hours in the evening on Thursday nights, kind of making it date night. We briefly talked about uh, maybe adding a theme um, to the nights, girls night out or date night. And then I think we decided not to go that route just so we can kind of see what it what it's it like. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is between Thanksgiving and Christmas and during Christmas. that time on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um working on the art walk. Um I believe we have some um artists from Annie, and we're working on some more. Um, we are also reaching out to businesses. I don't know if Jamie has any additional updates on businesses that want to participate in the art block. Um, and we talked about adding an event um, kind of in, in January to more like a family event to bring everyone in, maybe close um, parts of Old Woodward to allow um, walking in the streets, uh, we talked about some crazy ideas like the lining and um, fun things for the kids and for families to participate in. I'm not sure if we were able to find any companies yet, but that's, we're working on an additional um, event for, uh, to kind of fill that gap um, at something else fun. I think the challenges is winter events mm -hmm. come with other logistics. And, and costs that come along with that. So, uh, you know, just trying to take a look at that. I know Jamie's been working on that. We'll have more information on Friday for our events meeting. Beth, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, for a special event? I don't think so. Okay. Just covered it. I don't remember the zip line and how it's safe. That's the place to be on Friday morning. Yeah. And <laughs> all your ideas. <laughs> um, marketing and advertising, that's not here. Um, so an update on that, we went with C Magazine to discuss the holiday gift guide and start to plan that out. Um, and what we're going to do with that, finalizing the plan. Um, we've had a couple meetings on that. We also met with New Moon Visions, who, just a reminder, is the company that we're using to help us, um, let's see if I look up, um, to help us with the brand extension. So the logos for um, the Birmingham Farmers Market, 
the winter market and um, you know winter events and that kind of stuff. It's those sub logos that they are helping us develop. Um, keeping in mind that we are staying with the Birmingham logo and then making small changes to that to incorporate those different events. Um, if I could make yes. a plug for the Wayfinding Committee, we do. Yes. Yes. since Doug's not here, um, when you get some of that narrowed down, if you would be willing to bring it to the Wayfinding Committee, they, they, they're they trying to coordinate, make sure everything's kind of, it sounds like they're already. Yes, and that's what, um, because we had talked about something doing something more extensive and actually step that back because we felt like it was going to cross over with wayfinding. So what we want to do is just kind of coordinate with it. And we've already talked about Um that's about it for marketing and advertising. It was actually several meetings. So <laughs> well it says that's about it. There was actually a lot that went into yeah I think we had about three meetings. Three groups we had a lot. Uh, maintenance and capital improvement. Sorry, back over to your our no updates. We uh we canceled our meeting um and the meeting that's 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 it. Do we have any update on the restreaming of the light? Yeah. So actually I have some sample colors to look at. Let me just need to pick some sample colors. Oh great. <laughs> it came it came all of course like last week and stuff. So okay. Perfect. Seven hundred thousand twinkling lines this year. Wow. Okay. okay. That's part of my uh, I was gonna say that's a great thing to uh this part of it if you are working the other side. <laughs> it looks like they started painting them already. They did. They yeah. started crafting trees. Oh, okay. they yeah. started the yeah. 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 Well, it takes a long time to wrap them up. It takes months to get them up, and then it takes months to get them down. Yeah. 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 In that meeting, in or in our September meeting, we'll be discussing the um, uh, DPS luncheon. So as a reminder of the DPS luncheon, that we do it every year, um, but as a thank you for all the hard work, such as stringing all the lights <laughs> and all the planters and everything else that they do for us. So, um, if anyone would like to give towards that, that is something that remember connect does not come out of our budget. So if any board members want to give towards that, then um that will go ahead towards buying the DPS um alone. Should they just contact you, Amy? Yeah, go ahead and contact Um is this development? Well, Mike's not here. I wasn't at the last meeting, but I'm happy to take it away. I mean, this bureau, we have, we've covered it. We've, yeah, I mean, the bureau. Um, and then just on here, I I think uh, it's nice that we're trying to figure out, you know, ways to be educational for residents and visitors about the spaces in Birmingham instead of just focusing on, like, what, you know, we're trying to get. So um, I think that's about it. Yeah, Road to round table. Okay, that's October 19th. Um, and that will be at uh, Boji's office. Okay. Um, executive committee. Um, we talked about the, the ordinance and everything for. Um, what is it? Um, yeah, I, well, I know oh. that you were supposed to talk about the, um, yeah. the state law and the local yeah, ordinance. There, this is what I'm looking for. It's actually page 50, where it talks about the state law and the local ordinance. Um, so this talks about how there was a question that came up in the executive committee meeting, um, and we just wanted to kind of review it again of what the state law is 
for the composition of the BSD of a PSD, and then our local ordinance, so what the BSD actually does for it. Um, and so ours is um, more strict or- Just a little bit, it's right. just a, a little bit more, more defined. Yes, than what the state law is. Um, and there was discussion about whether, you know, this is still applicable um, or anything needs to be updated in this um, as we look at it. And if it did, what would happen is the recommendation, if there were updates made, the recommendation would then go to the city commission for the city commission approval. So FYI on that. Um, there was no recommendation or real discussion on making any updates to that out of the executive committee, but we wanted to make sure that we're communicating all of this stuff to the board in case as anyone reviews it and think, you know, we're kind of getting to that point where we need to make some changes. And again, it's going in line with what we've been looking at, trying to, um, you know, hone in on some of these details, like a strategic plan and everything like that. And then also make sure that we're staying relevant to what is going on in the district. And I think the, the, you know, the major difference is that in the local ordinance, you actually um, uh, appoint then a area resident and an adjacent resident. Right. Whereas at the state law, it only requires an adjacent resident. Which, um, which governs if there's a conflict, state or local? Local. 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 Yeah. I just wanted to point out that we do have two or three appointments that will be coming up in the yes. next right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, right. <clears throat> and then, and we're already working with anyone that's up for appointment to determine who, or to find out who wants to continue on and who might not be. Um, that was pretty much it that we different than anything we've already discussed. Everything else was stuff that we talked about throughout the different committee updates. Um, parking report. Yes, go ahead. I was going to ask the question too, Mark. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, those are strong. Those are strong. <laughs> I know Richard's not here. I'm the on page 51 at the bottom. It says the waiting list. It says on the wait list another month, like from Fisher 465. And then under people on the wait list 195. What I don't understand. Right. Uh, anybody? <laughs> I'm not gonna have to ask, but my my estimate on that is that it could be companies waiting to get on. That's what I'm assuming, like the company that puts in for 50 permits. Right, exactly. So that's, that's my, my that's my guess as well. But then I actually have the question too: if we have garage permits available, right, so, yeah, it should be. And then we have all of these people on the wait list. That was my question. So, are we? And it might be a in a matter of timing because you go to them, ask them if they still want it, and then. But it's just, you know, it should always be zero available that we have a waiting list. I, I mean, and I'm curious because we just got it done in you know, one of the townhouses and they're just like crying about, you know, we can't get in there, we're on a waiting list. You know, and I see this, I see they're available, so I don't know if she's pursuing it or she just wants a free spot. Not a lot, but it's pretty typical. I'll have to check in with Aaron with the parking manager, but I I'm not sure why there would be permits available here unless it's just a lag. Some turn to the got to get to the next thing. Yeah. You should give her the three spots. It's hard to say. I think the one thing that I know Aaron always says is that there's there's always space available in Chester, and it's trying. He's been trying to also get some of those to elect to go to Chester, and I realize that you know that's probably not where. You know, where some people might want to be, but more and more coming back to McCann, which uh, numbers should shrink, sure. honestly. Yeah, but it's still a battle trying to 
But if you look at the average daily occupancy of the decks, they're they're open. They yeah. are really open. Like I think the highest one is Pierce at forty six percent. Yeah, I think even from last month, there was quite a decrease from from June to July. And, well, and I, I like that's typical. That's, that's you can yeah. use the difference yeah. from August to now yeah. uh, with people driving down the road. So the we'll school say, starts yeah. all over everyone. <laughs> exactly. In the park will be the busiest one. Uh, it's Pierce and uh, Park is the, no, everybody's the second one. Chester is dead last. Three dials and I'm like, let's try the deck. Everyone's saying, you know, how uh, decks are open and I mean, this was just kind of on a random day, but like I spent like 15 minutes in that deck. <laughs> and the hardest time to park is, you know, like 1145 to 1150. Uh, 52. Yeah. But it was, there were spots if you drive, if you, if you go out in the top, spot. you know, I got green and I tried to get out of the first for a while. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing. No one is. You don't even know what happens at the top of the pipeline. <laughs> there's a lot of changes. I actually took a picture the other day. I was walking and I saw a woman sitting on the very top of the ledge, feet hanging. Oh, God. Oh, beating the book. Oh, my God. I have a picture of it. I should send it to you guys. Oh, my God. Like, she okay? She didn't look like she was in distress. She was literally reading a book. But um, it's kind of crazy. so weird. So maybe she just went to Kilimanjaro or something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, That's it's, really scary. It was really scary. I'm actually reading. Life isn't that bad. Yeah. Okay. Get, get a grip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next, wing finding. Doug's not here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, going to go down the deal. All right, well, we had a great meeting. We, the company that's working, we're working with, uh, presented us with the two designs um, for, and they kind of presented us with like a pedestrian view of what are those called? Kiosks. Kiosks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, vehicular view and also a gateway into town. Um, the two designs were very different. Um, I would say one was um, safe, beautiful, safe, uh, felt like something you've seen before, traditional. Um, like I said in the meeting, you would not hear anyone complaining on next door if we went with this design. <laughs> And then we and then we were presented with a different design that was much more modern, but also um, beautiful. Uh, represented, um, they kind of took the statue in Shane Park and our logo and worked that into the design of what they came up with. It was very different. We were uh, we had some you know lively discussions about which one would be best. Um, we the committee did vote for the more modern design. Which is exciting, and that's where we're at. And so that recommendation is going to the commission. Yes. Um, and the actual design of it um, will come back to the board, and you'll get to see it after the commission has. Um, well, we up. we you know we do have it. it mm -hmm. You know, if you want to yeah. put it in the next pack and let me know, and yeah. make sure you get the copy and let me see it. Yeah. It was, it, it, you know, they did a good job. They yeah. did a great job. Yeah. And I mean, I'm usually like tra traditional type, but this monarch, oh, it, it, it just, the traditional was very pretty, um, elegant, right? Plain, but every Board. city, Board. anywhere. Right. Exactly. But the modern one was like, okay, yeah, and this, the, this is the, Birmingham and it's for unique, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. But when can you talk about the gateway to the city? What what is that? That's where you know in the main and vehicular entrances to town, particularly like where you come in off of Woodward, you're coming from Royal Oak to Birmingham, from Bloomfield Hills to Birmingham. But That's where you get to from Birmingham. Oh, yeah, you get the larger statement piece. Okay. okay. And what they do is they put together like a a, a total uh, family of signs. Um, and they were going to go back and refine those and, and bring that back to the committee. So that was, I know, the next step. Yes. Yeah. So it's not, it's not 
completely finalized, but it's narrowed down. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then the most of the commission. From what Doug had said in the executive committee, is they wanted to make sure that it was like until the commission actually saw it. Yeah, you don't want to see it yet. before, right? Like, you know. Everybody, people <laughs> like to other people get sneak peeks. Yeah, you know? they want it to be they want to see What's yeah. the uh, if once it's all approved and decided on, what's the execution timeline? Well, it gets placed in the budget in phases, mm -hmm. so we do have money in the budget through the planning department for some in this fiscal year. Yeah, and typically, you know, with the contractor, they will once we've you know narrowed down. What the concept is, then they can actually begin to estimate out what that budget would be for each type of sign, as well as how many signs of each sign that you need. So, right. So this is like the, the concept design. Right. Then there'd the be the detailed construction plans. Then there'd be fabrication. Mm -hmm. Then there'd be it. Yeah. Right. So. Here, here. So like last year, uh, it does. It you know, the only thing it takes years and years is anything on Woodward with them not. Mm -hmm. You just have to keep phoning them and phoning them and bugging them until you get someone on a bad day, and they go, "Fine, just leave me alone." Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 but then, plus, uh, but there was the Birmingham sign. Welcome to Birmingham sign. I mean, South and Woodward, right? Um, that got hit. That got hit. hit. Yeah, that's oh, year. Year. And that's the reason that it has not, everything hasn't been redone with it, is because instead of spending the money on that, and wait, it was significant, and, right, wait and have it actually done with this mm -hmm. and continue this. Yeah. And I want to say that old design was from like, oh, three, oh, four, six. So you know it's, it's and 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 there was money in the budget every year, but the, the commission at that time they approved the money for the first one, two, three years, and then they cut it out every time. So then the whole system didn't get implemented. So I think we want to try to sell it as as a system because you don't want just two random signs, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not helpful. Yeah, it's not, there's yeah. not we finding that right. <laughs> Okay, um, in the back of the packet is the monthly meeting schedule and announcements. Um, one correction is that the board meeting today is at 8.30, not at right. 8. Um, and the same thing for next month will be at 8.30. Um, and then any other board member comments? Public comments. We may want to change the invites if we're starting at 8 30 and it gets busier, or maybe everyone should just know to book two hours. Sometimes I notice like oh we, so we have an hour and a half on it. We get an hour and a half. So yeah. like and I'm like not, you know, just me personally, like my right. calendar, like sometimes I'll put a 10 o'clock, you know, like right. Yeah. Oh. And then like it's like 945. I'm like, all right, you know, we're here on the agenda. Like my anxiety is at about like a four. <laughs> no, then, <laughs> Ten minutes later, I'm like starting to sweat a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just <laughs> always paid well, 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 Maybe I'll just do it like well, our time better too then. I, well, I always like extra time too. Sometimes it's hard though because so then you just keep talking. Well, well some on, the, also, the, but yeah, like the tickets we're talking about, you know, the parking uh ticket fees, like right. things then people, you know, just so yeah, sometimes, sometimes I don't know, maybe yeah. it's just I should just be doing this myself to be like, hey, add half hour and every meeting so that you can do the free. <laughs> we we can do that. That's not a problem. So. Um, <laughs> any public comments? No? Okay. All right. Then we are adjourned. Does anyone want to go to the buy and dine on Tuesday? So we do get two tickets. Um, and I'm happy to go drink wine. Um, <laughs> if anyone would like to drink wine with me, <laughs> so let me know. <laughs> you can shoot me a text. Say, yeah, I'm available. <laughs> I'll be there. Okay. Well, well, I'm going to Yeah, I'm not going to do it. 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 Yeah, I'm not going to
What's your channel? Are you heading to This is called FS Tech. It's food service technology. Oh, so it's very good. Yeah. Well, and then the next restaurant. You did that, right? Yeah. Okay. Did you join for the Michigan? You know, I just joined the Association. It's weird. I am actually going to be a speaker at a Women in Hospitality Leaders Conference. So it's not that nobody. What? Yeah. So that'll be how. Whatever I say. That's in the deep south. Thing the the yeah. Yeah. I, I think I had it when it was four. I think it's still all. Yes. Oh, I could you the other five then. You already doing a bunch of that. Yeah, we're going to collect the whole class for that now. Or you can do it at a maintenance committee meeting on Tuesday. What do you expect? You at the maintenance committee meeting for any kind of conference. What you're getting involved in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're getting involved in. Um, I'll just yeah. have to carry it. I will have to carry it.